Hello and welcome to the Adventures of Midlife YouTube channel. One of Cambodia's hidden gems is the Korang Samlam Island of Sihanoukville. It is a place where one could easily spend a week engaging in adventurous tours or simply relaxing, enjoying the quiet waters and delicious food. I spent a few days here recently and here is this midlife adventurous trip report from the Korang Island of Sihanoukville in Cambodia. First, a little background to the trip to Korang Samlong or KRS as it is called. As I had mentioned in my previous posts and videos, I was on a three week long four nation tour that took me to New York, Singapore, Cambodia and Malaysia. Cambodia was the crux of the tour and I was to spend most of my time there. In Cambodia itself, I spent time in Siam Reap before heading to Korang Samlong and then finally to the capital, Phnom Penh. I was planning to spend 10 nights in Cambodia and I knew I was going to Siam Reap and the capital Phnom Penh. So I wanted to spend a few days by the beach. And for that, there are a few options in Cambodia. The Sihanoukville and the two islands of Korong and Korong Samlam. There were also other places such as Koh Kong, Kep and Kampot, though they are not necessarily known as beach spots the type of spots I want to go to. So I was keen on either Korong or the small island of KRS, both of which have a number of beaches. Finally, I zeroed in on the Sara Resort on Saracen Bay. How to get to KRS? From Siam Reap, there were three options to get to the island. By bus to Sihanoukville and then the ferry. Rent a car to Sihanoukville and then take the ferry. Fly to Sihanoukville and then take the ferry. I opted for the third option. It was more expensive than the first two options obviously and I did seriously consider renting a car so that I could see some of the countryside. But I didn't have that many days in the country so I decided to use the time efficiently. I had seen what I wanted to see in Siam Reap and now I wanted to reach a beach as soon as possible. From the Sihanoukville airport, I took a taxi to the ferry terminal. The Sara Resort advised me taking a particular ferry that anchors off at a pier close to the resort. But I got confused at the terminal in Sihanoukville and bought the two-way ticket only to find out that it goes to a different pier, the Sunung Pier on the island. But the resort staff were cool with the change of plan and said they will pick me up from the Sunung Pier where the ferry will stop. The boat passed through mostly quiet waters and the landscape on either side was pretty. An islet here and there, some hills with lush greenery and then open waters. So why did I choose Korang Samlom? My preference was a lively beach with many options for eating out. But though there were references to the many beaches in Korang, there wasn't much information on them. Some beaches sounded like secluded resorts, so I disregarded them. Some of the beaches sounded as if they were ideal for backpackers with hostels or accommodation without air conditioning. I didn't want luxury, but I want comfort. I also wasn't sure what facilities in terms of restaurants were available in some of the beaches. And one of the challenges was that a good number of videos and blog posts were done either before the COVID or in 2022 or early 23 and I have assumed a lot has changed since then. Having become confused with Korang, I shifted my attention to KRS. There was even less information about this smaller island but I found Empire Bay and found it alluring because this was an area where the tourists could intermingle with locals. Another area I found interesting was the Saracen Bay. Finally, I zeroed in on the Sara Resort on Saracen Bay. I had assumed the ferry would first go to Korang and then reach KRS, but we were the first stop after about 20 minutes of leaving Sihanoukville. Shortly after disembarking at the Sunong Pier, the resort's boat came. 
it was another 5 minute ride in the small boat. The Sara Resort first offers a cool drink for the guest and then the check-in formalities. And soon we were taken to our room. After a short break in the room, it was time to engage in what brought me here. Enjoy the beach. It was a very clean beach. There was no garbage or any unwanted material. The beach though is shallow. One will have to walk a few dozen meters to get to the deeper waters. I stayed closer to the beach and it was a calm beach with a few boats in the distance. The hotel's dinner special for that day, barbecued shrimps, was very enticing. After all, a second reason I came to this island was to enjoy seafood. Besides, they had lit up their beach with tiki torches and that was a place to have a quiet dinner. And the dinner, washed down with beer, was delicious. On the first morning in the island, I woke up and felt the breeze as I came out of the room for a morning walk. Then it was time to enjoy a breakfast. My booking at the Sara Resort came with free breakfast and I had a local noodle soup. And of course, I asked for diced hot chilies. And then it was time to hit the beach. The beach was much different from what I had seen the previous evening. Now in the morning, the water level had risen with the high tide I could still walk for a few dozen meters with my feet touching the sea floor. And except for a few ripples, it was still a quiet sea. But it didn't mean that it was all a quiet place. There were many boats in the sea and near the shore. And near the shore, men were draining the waters of their boats. Afterwards, hmm? I took a long walk along the bay. And I saw the effects of the COVID lockdowns. Along the way, I saw many shuttered resorts and huts. This one, for example, must have been a fancy one with solo cabins, but now there is nothing here. I saw another hotel with most of the furniture still intact. For lunch, I wanted to try something new, so I walked to my left and found the Eden Resort. It was also a hotel with a restaurant and it looked pretty quiet. I ordered my favorite morning glory stir fry with garlic and squid with compote peppercorns. It was another delicious meal and after a long walk it was time to get back to my room for a siesta. As the sun set on the other side of the island, the tiki torches were back and the hotel had grilled red snapper for dinner. The dinners always come with corn and then it started raining. The rain ceased eventually and I noticed one of the nearby hostels or hotel had a fire dance event. I also noticed the sky was quite clear with the stars shining. The next day began as always with a clear sky. After enjoying the sunrise, it was time for breakfast. This time, I went for a western breakfast with toast, bacon and eggs. I noticed the beach was somewhat busy. Here and there I saw a jogger and out in the sea there were boats plying. I wasn't sure whether some of them were fishing boats and perhaps some were taking passengers for a sunrise ride or maybe snorkeling. And then after a brief dip in the sea, it was time to get rid of the laziness and exert myself. And the best way was to walk to the lazy beach. The lazy beach is on the other side, on the western side of the island and it is about 1.5 kilometers just across the island by foot. I started off around 9 am and it was already turning out to be a hot day. But fortunately, there's enough greenery to provide cover should one need one. The path leads to two beaches, the lazy beach and the sunset beach. I know that the route to the sunset beach was somewhat more strenuous than the other one. I had already seen videos of people walking slash hiking to the sunset beach. There are clear signs showing the path to both beaches but I still got lost sometimes. I blamed it on some signs missing at some crucial forks. 
Of course, I had my data package, but it wasn't working at all places. And besides, I was also mindful of not using it up. And then there it was, the lazy beach. It was a very quiet place, sort of a lazy place when I arrived there with just a handful of people resting on the beach or idling in the water. Just like the Saracen Bay, here too the water was getting warmer. I walked to the Lazy Beach restaurant to get a green coconut. I liked that they gave me a metal straw which I had to return. The Lazy Beach resort has a quiet vibe to it with wooden bungalows all over. At least that's how it was when I was there. After a few dips and resting, I saw the dark clouds gathering in the distance and assumed there will be an early afternoon thunderstorm. This made me to ditch my initial plan of having lunch there and return to the other side of the island. On the way back, I saw more people walking towards the lazy beach, so obviously they were not worried about the gathering storm. It was time for lunch and I decided to have lunch at One Day's Hostel which is close to the Sara Resort. The hostel is a backpacker heaven and was very busy. I loved the advisories hanging at various places in the restaurant. While they are funny, it's also a sign of the challenges the staff face. I ordered a rice dish with fried egg and stir-fried seafood. Of course, I got my extra chilies. It was a simple yet great lunch. Later, I walked further to the right and found this rather luxury resort, the La Passion and had a fabulous dessert with mangoes, glutinous rice and coconut. In the evening, it was dinner time at the hotel. And of course, it rained heavily with lightning and thunder. Again, the ticket torches were put down and the barbecue moved to the main corridor. For the second time, I went for seafood dinner. Later, when the rain ceased, I stepped out for a walk. One of the astonishing features is that one wouldn't notice that it had rained so heavily. The sand had obviously absorbed all the water. And here and there, the restaurants were getting busy, bringing their chairs out, lighting the ticket torches, etc, etc. It was day 4 and the day of departure. After the breakfast and a brief walk, I checked out. The small boat was ready for me to take me to the ferry terminal. Again, we were initially told the ferry would take a circuitous route to Korang before reaching Sianokville. But it just went straight to the city. My next stop was the capital Phnom Penh and I had initially planned to rent a car but just for the fun decided to travel by a small bus. Some information on Koran Samlam or KRS. Access. There is no airport here, so the sea provides the only access to the two islands. There are multiple ferries leaving from the Sianokville terminal. Unfortunately, there does not appear to be a common website detailing all the ferry timings. I wanted to take the Buwa Sea Ferry but ended up taking another one. It all worked out fine anyway. Internet. The hotel provides Wi-Fi network and I also had my own eSIM. Even though there have been reports of bad data coverage, I didn't find it that bad. Granted, I was mostly in the hotel or walking around close by, except for the walk to the lazy beach and most of the time the connection worked okay. Cash. There is still no ATM in the island but most of the places accept credit cards. They also offer cashback services but Check whether the establishment will charge the credit card commission to you. I used mostly cash. What to do in the island? KRS is a quiet place. From what I have read and felt, the Saracen Bay is perhaps the most active of the few beaches there. The Lazy Beach Resort looked like a comfortable one like the Sara Resort. Then there is also the Sunset Beach, which from what I have read, is rather a quieter place with mostly backpacker hostels or for those who want to rough out without air conditioning. 
The Empire Bay is mostly the same, while the Saracen Bay has a mixture of comfy hotels and hostel-like accommodations. So, considering all these, here are some reasons why one could, should go to the Korong Samlam Island, snorkeling, kayaking, enjoying the glowing or bioluminescent plankton in the night, an island hopping tour, walk or just chill out enjoying the quietness and the beauty of the island. I was there for just 3 days and took it easy. But one thing I missed is that I rarely interacted with any locals. It appears that a lot of staff come from outside. There are locals in the Empire Bay but I had decided to stay in the Saracen Bay. I would have also preferred more eating out options but as I mentioned the island is just coming off the long lockdowns and still in recovery mode. So hopefully things will improve over the next few months and over the next few years. Well, that's it for now for this video edition of the Adventures of Midlife. I talked about my three days in the small island of Korong Samlong or KRS of Sihanoukville in Cambodia. I hope you enjoyed my video and see you soon. Ciao.